Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayemba and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community public meeting to share information about joining our Black Star Pan-African Community on our 15 and 60 acre phase one and phase two. Today's date is July 3rd, 2022. And uh, we literally just got back from Ghana a few weeks ago. Uh, so we have lots of updates that we're going to be sharing via photos and videos of our, basically our presentation or what I would call our land tour from our group uh, visit uh, to our community, uh, which was on May 29th of uh, 2022. So that is always uh, exciting because we always want to just make sure that uh, everyone uh, see the progress of us just trying to work this thing out as far as this, uh, our reconnection and us acquiring land and us being able to put our energy together and basically organize a community uh, that can cater to what we're looking to get connected to so we can be more effective on the African continent to uh, live and do business and to work with our own brothers and sisters from the different countries so we can all enterprise together uh, to just get straight to the point. So the community is always that energy and that effort to basically welcome more of us and make sure that we're in good hands and make sure that we don't have people taking advantage of us and making sure that we can just come together and get things done. So that is the, the focus always of our operation. And uh, so far we have uh, paid off 15 acres of land. Uh, we are paying for registration at this moment. So that will be completed soon. And the next thing that we're looking to do is to um, uh, keep on paying on our 60 acres of land and then work on our registration for that one also. And uh, right now we're in a process of just uh, looking to add us another uh, surveyor or two. Uh, that way we can just go back and reorganize the layout of the land and put up some fresh pillars. Uh, we had pillars put up two years ago and after getting the land clear the last time, some of them were knocked over. So we can just get the land clear again. And uh, this is coming up in October and redo the pillars, which are meant to be the four points for each plot and also for the direction of the road. And let's do a nice little layout and then this work on getting the new members who wanna build to start build. Uh, so this is an ongoing uh, process uh, that we, it's a lot of moving parts on it. Uh, we have uh, attorneys and surveyors and also consultants that you have to work with to just get a bunch of things going. And it does uh, takes having an incredible amount of patience um, and having to just, um, just, just try to work with people so we can get this done. But uh, it's, uh, it's something that's worth it. And it's something that it's not a whole bunch of us that's been able to put our energy together and get 10 plus or more acres of land to do any kind of group projects, usually just individuals getting a few plots for themselves, which is fine. But we also have to build some level of corporate economics, some level of getting back to using communalism as a form of just using our resources to put ourselves in a better position. When I mean a better position, you have land, so you want to, you want to develop the land. And when I'm talking about developing it, not just talking about house, business, and community center. I'm talking about enterprising to where you have your warehouse, your factories, uh, you're by a beach. So we can also just think about the possibilities. And that possibility come from this, us as a people just being more connected and being more open. So that's why we always have these tours to the town itself of Jahadzi uh, on our way from our car on our final day. We just drive off into the central region. It's a two hour drive. We get to see the office that we are building little by little as far as this, the real estate operation itself. Uh, and it's a three bedroom, two bathroom house. And it's, it's, it's on a nice uh, lot. Uh, it's uh, in another community. So it's not our house, it's a rental, but that's where we're starting at. Uh, and then we always take everyone to see the 15 acres of land. And uh, this time we didn't get a chance to see the 60 acres of land, but I do have GPS coordinates and links on there uh, for us to share with everyone to see where the second phase of land is or the 60 acres of land is. And then when we return to Ghana on our next uh, land tour, December 29th, we're gonna make that a focal point of our visit to just get right there 
on the uh, 60 acres since by then that would be the only land left. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, how it split off into residential and commercial and just trying to open up our minds to this industrializing this enterprise completely to where we're building a self-sufficient uh, community where we have all the things that we need. We're tapping into this, uh, the world of this, uh, you know, ecology to where now we want to set up our own independent water system, which we have great examples of those things. Uh, sitting power system, now these solar packages are more efficient and then you have wind turbine system and other uh, options. Uh, so these are all things that um, we are working on and we have envisioned. I know people have came and seen the roads and it's not like in America where you just acquire land and you start to build a community. Next thing you know, the roads are done, the sewage is done. Uh, the sewers and roads, those are all our responsibility. So all of this is, you know, it goes beyond just uh, us just getting land. So now we have to just work together as a community to find the best method to do these things. And these are the things that we have to learn to get to use to do. And honestly, uh, it's uh, you know, show up for meetings when we give our commitments, stick to our commitments and things like that. And I'm a person that people have seen around for a long time this in this Africa repatriation, Africa tours uh, movement since I was uh, 26 and now 44, uh, 18 straight years. And the issue that I've always seen is just the lack of commitment of people who just, you know, we want to see things happen in Africa. We want to see that Africa that we can just come and enjoy and live and do business and invest. But in order for us to see that Africa, we have to put you know, a little more work into it. Uh, we have to put things beyond just our money. I know sometimes we feel like we put our money, that's enough, and that, that's uh, enough for some of us. But at the same time, to out of that group, we also need some of us to go beyond that and also be leaders or be organizers into putting the things that need to be put together and make it work. Uh, there's only so much things myself or our vice president, Azebo, or the one or other two people that we have can do. And um, many people that are working with us have stretched themselves, but this this is a big project and you know it's it's fine to be a big project because we can only do so much small projects and small enterprises and after a while we're gonna have to step it up and this is us stepping it up that 60 acres um you know i know sometimes people are like can you really do this yes the 60 acres you got you have to think about it 10 acres alone and when i show everyone the map that's for farming alone and you know you have to you want to get back to you know to where you just farm your own organic food and not be paying for overpriced um, poison, I guess that's what I can call it, or food that has, you know, food that's been tampered as far as this house grown or made. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, us um, making that move in that town in Jahadzi is us coming together to build a town and working with uh, other groups of people that are there uh, from Ghana and from other countries or from this uh, wherever that's looking to just be a part of that town. Uh, that town could be transformed into many things. And uh, out of all of the places I've been to in Ghana and I looked around, you know, this was this was it. You know, once it was introduced to me based on my consultant doing a research accent to research uh, as far as us getting us uh, about two miles away from the beach and in basically an untapped town or a location to where it's, uh, it, it, it's not uh, developed like a whole colonial town, you know, yeah, uh, it's you can you can build a fresh, you, know, you can build fresh uh, sewage. You can build fresh this technology around the whole town because it's basically just raw land for most for the most part. Uh, so that's what I love about it, and it also give us um, you know, give us the confidence and the connection to learn to do development from the ground up. So right now, this is my <laughs> new career, and I've been working hard at it for the last uh, three to five years to learn everything in it as far as this land of real estate uh, acquisition or land acquisition and also land development. Uh, so it's one of those things where people like myself, once we put our work into it, you know, we make it happen. I remember this, yeah, I mean, 18 years ago, talking about going to Africa and then you have turned it into an incredible business to where have taken people all over different parts of Africa and, and have connected people to where you have, you know, it has transformed people's life into where you have people living and doing business and it has also influenced other people. So these are the things that uh, you just never want to limit yourself because, you know, we, sh you know, we should want to get up every day and work to make an impact for our generations to come. 
And this town is also for a generation of children, the ones that we're bringing, the ones that are gonna be born or the ones that are there right there in the town to where we're building a future for them to where they can learn to get more involved in, in, in the world of technology and uh, business enterprise and uh, get into uh, manufacturing and the, the things that um, you may not necessarily have that opportunity because you're in a small town and um, and then you may not necessarily have that opportunity unless you know you uh, go to America or Europe. Uh, so a lot of times uh, we're very limited, uh, but that limitation can be reduced by us uh, literally just planning things out. And this is just something that you're planning out. Um, you're, you're planning out for something even longer than your your life existence is. You know, you're doing that 10 to 100 year plan and that is acquiring land and developing it into a, you know, an efficient town that we can put our money and invest in and create uh, generational wealth for a family. You know I mean, literally generational wealth. And that is uh, the importance of land. And that's why while we're here in these Americas, everyone else takes land so serious. You know, I look at where I'm from, I'm from uh, Jamaica. I was born on the southern part of the, the island and then on the opposite side, the northern part of the island or the north coast, you have some of the richest real estate that the world have ever seen, some of the richest resorts that have ever been built, even resorts that are specifically exclusive and it's only there in Jamaica. Uh, this is incredible. And so I'm just saying that's what you can do with real estate. And um, we're always in the game sometimes late, but you have to find uncharted and untapped areas to do these development. And another country that I'm going to be talking more about uh, is uh, Liberia. Uh, that is the next vision of our Black Star Pan African Community Enterprise. Uh, so it's something that's going to take a few years and take some work to get that connection, get things set up in Liberia. But uh, that is ultimately, you know, you're, you're looking at expansion of being, being able to be connected to coastal cities for many simple reasons. One reason is your import export. One reason is moving ships along from uh, country to country. Um, so trade and uh, also this uh, moving along your, the people that you're doing business with. Uh, so it's just many uh, things you can um, look at uh, when you just have those access of land and water and beaches and you know, thinking in the mindset of this you know, ecology and the mindset of just building your own ecosystem and your own trading connection routes. And also, you know, you have the Caribbean islands right across from right there in West Africa, where we're looking to do most of our enterprise. Yeah. Uh, so that is um, the importance of our us building Black Star Pan-African community. You know, we have to just build it up from the ground up, learn to do all the paperwork, uh, get uh, multiple attorneys to work with us now, now that we're expanding. And it's been rough for some of our people there in Ghana, because unfortunately, uh, they've been frustrated with some of us who have joined the group and and they've done paperwork for them. They have went above and beyond and put things together for them. And then they changed their mind based on this reasons. Reasons, um, I would say this connected to this wanting to see everything and everything and all and everything get done and this work and materialize overnight uh, without having to do anything than just put their money. And those things are not that simple. You know, I, I'm, I live here in Georgia. People make jokes all the time when I see them saying that I, I'm somewhere in Africa and, I, and, and I'm never in America and I'm all, and I was like, no, I was like, you've seen pictures and videos. I'm here working. That's what I do for a living. I, I, I work and I, you know, I do more than this technology business, business administrators, administration. You know, you're a person that's actively dealing with customers, whether you're doing technical or business work for them and things like that, that even goes beyond just tours and investments and things like that. So you're here and then you're trying to make an incredible world in Africa happen. Now, I'm not going to just get up and leave my business enterprise here and just move to Africa just to make people satisfied and happy. You know, what we did even beyond that, we got an office right there in the town. That office is specifically to show people the land. Uh, any business things that need to be done, we can get them right here in America, right here, over the phone, right here, over the internet. Or you can come right here to my office here in Georgia. And if you so happen to just want to be there in Ghana, uh, we can get everything sent over to that office there. Uh, but what is being set up 
uh, once uh, things are organized there on the land is to move our entire business center from here to Jahadzi in the business center and run all kinds of different operations. And that will give the flexibility for us to train and educate a young staff and group of people in the world of technology and business administration. So when you're doing all these business, you have to think about all the things that need to be done over email, uh, websites, uh, things that have to be kept up with uh, invoices, uh, the communication spreadsheet, uh, databases, um, all those uh, technical things. And then uh, you're dealing with computers, phones, TVs, cameras, camcorders, all those equipment. Uh, so all those things, uh, you know, from using them, maintain, maintaining them, uh, uh, which include fix and repair, all those wonderful things, troubleshooting. These are all the things that uh, people like myself teach as far as uh, technical operation. Then as far as business operation, setting up business, starting business operation, marketing up, keeping up with all of the, your business flow, uh, managing uh, customers, uh, staff members, crew, and then uh, getting all of the uh, business work that needs to be done. Uh, so it's a whole lot and um, you know, and we can we add in many things into it. Um, person that since I started my world of this uh, being an aircraft uh, technician in the US Navy, uh, part of your position is always coming with training and educating others as you go up in the ranks and you learn, you train. Uh, Everything is always based on hands-on training. Uh, so that whole business center that uh, I have illustrated and laid out on the 15 acres is literally set up for the purpose of us just doing all of those independent enterprises, including training, educating, and running operations. And that will... Re, you know, reduce the amount of um, the amount of um, stress for me to keep up with all these things. But at the same time, too, it would also just make things more efficiently because now you have more dedicated people on one or two things individually to work on it. And um, and as you also, since we're dealing with real estate, um, the goal is also is is to add a few more builders. But the builders are going to only stay when we have people want to get their homes built. Uh, so I've been able to maintain two of the six builders and the other four, you can always reach back out to them, but it's always based on a situation of them getting active work. So I always want to let everyone know that we have builders and it's more than just the two people that are building now, but that's just based on who is ready to build. So what I want to get right into is uh, screen sharing. All right, so this first screen sharing is called Join Black Star Pan-African Community in Ghana, Getting Started Process with Membership Application Requirement, Bylaws, Overview, Samples, and more. Phase one and two plots are ready for purchase. So this is an active ongoing investment uh, project uh, for anyone who wants to just acquire a plot of land, 80 by 100 uh, in South size and it is also a future project so it is being consistently worked on so we have came a long way from from here to then where, where we were uh, two and a half years ago and most of what you see is updated documentation uh, that's all of the legal paperwork for the 15 and the uh, 60 acres of land including I have a list of uh, documentation at the very bottom of this email um, and it's a, it's titled important attached files, information including legal documents and samples. So that is a, a list of all of the files. It's a lot of files and information, but uh, to get right to the point, it's uh, basically all of the things that you need as far as requirements to join a group. It gives you the sample information, including sample application, uh, sample documentation and also it gives you all of the uh, documentation and legal information of the land that way you can look it over process it and make a uh, organized decision and to get right into the details of the land I have a nice introduction here for phase one and two 
and uh, phase three vision, uh, and also the price of the land to get to the point on that also, it is uh, 3,000 for the core land, 500 for administrative costs, $350 for survey and 700 for registration. So that is a total of $4,550. So that is the price per plot of land, $4,550. And it's broken down like that. So everyone could just be clear on the uh, breakdown. Right. So uh, phase one of the initial 15 acres uh, has 50 plots and uh, we just have a few plots available. Uh, so uh, along with the 50 plots is uh, a business center and a community center. That's what the front portion of the land is for. And that's basically on four and a half plots each. And then you have um, a security office slash entrance. And that's on like a half a size of a plot or, or closer to um, one plot. So that is the other 10 plots in the front, and that will make a total of 60 plots. At uh, phase two is uh, 240 plots, and that is 60 acres of residential and business project land. And uh, this will include uh, 30 plots for farming, 120 for residential plots, 24 for apartment slash condos for those who just wanna invest in that or for investors who just want to build apartments or condos, 32 uh, for on-site commercial investment. And when I show the phase two layout, uh, you'll be able to just have a better view of it. I'm gonna put that up uh, soon. And uh, four plots for community store, um, four for medical center, education slash uh, training building, maintenance facility, and eight plots for additional community and business center. Uh, so the whole uh, 60 acres is set to be an independent, this 60 acres to where it's just completely self-sufficient, where it has everything that you need as an independent, this operation. Uh, the 15 acres is a small version of that, but uh, since we don't have all the other additional land to do any kind of commercial operation, that's the big difference. But nevertheless, uh, uh, the 15 acres represent just having a nice organized uh, community similar to a usual community that you have where it has at least an office and this uh, residential home. Instead, this has an incredible business center and community center and also just 50 plots for homes. So it uh, will be just the foundation of what we build and what we just look to this build uh, which would be just an incredible community because you're trying to encourage the, you know, us enterprising. That's what the business center is for. And uh, while I have that going, I'm going to look to I'm look to load uh, the site map for the for the 15, uh, for the 60 acres. Right, right up. And this is a terrible uh, rough draft, uh, but it's uh, also this, it's free writing. It's like once you have the legal layout of the survey, you can kind of just, just mark in pencil kind of where you want certain things and then uh, get it in a digital system and make it look real nice. So everything I've shown from the beginning, even when we first went to the land, in December of 2019, is just it was just raw land, and you're like, what is this? Uh, but that's what I'm looking to get us to just have a bit of vision on is just to be able to see things in a raw stage, and just think about how it could be built and developed. You know? And uh, it's kind of one of the conversations I was telling a friend about uh, that I lived in New York City when I was a teenager, and 
New York City, I was just, you know, we was talking about the map of New York City, about the engineering genius of how it was put together with this, all these little small islands that's connected by all these various bridges and, you know, and things like that. And then how it just make it, you know, it looks bigger than it really is based on the engineering layout. Uh, so you have 60 acres of land. This is literally could be the size of a small island and you just build in a residential and a commercial operation in it. Uh, now, so uh, I talk about the different, uh, you know, the different uh, plots layout. So it's actually 32 acres for farm. So that is about a good uh, eight acres of land. And some of these could also be adjusted based on what we need. It's just you have to start somewhere. Uh, but that eight acres can grow a whole lot of what you want to grow. You can get into poultry farm and you can do, there's no limitation, but the goal is to literally grow all of the food trees that you can imagine growing. That's one thing about food trees. You know, once you start growing them, they just start bearing fruits, you know, you can get up to like 50 years of this fruit being bared from a mango tree or just apple or uh, orange tree or just anything that you put up. So, but that also just put us back in that incredible situation of just growing our own food and just building what we're looking to build and using all of the skills that we have in this, creating our own, this construction operation, you know, from some of the people that we have here and some of the people that we have uh, there in Ghana. So we're using all of what we have and all of what we have access to, which is our people in the diaspora and our people there on the African continent uh, to make this uh, project work. So this is a true Pan-African project. And all of these lots, um, these most of these lots are available. Uh, we only have a few people who have committed to it and have made payments on the land. Uh, but we're looking to this. Uh, once we just get rid of the last uh, few plots in the 15 acres, uh, we're going to be able to just spend more time and pushing this. And also, I do have the GPS location uh, for all of the land site because the 15 and the 60 acres is in two separate locations. You know, relatively, what you say about quarter of a mile to a half a mile away. Uh, so, and it's something that um, I'm going to see if I can plot out on the maps. But uh, this is uh, continue from the, the last plot that's on phase one, which is 50. Uh, so it starts from 51. And it goes all the way to 170. So you're looking at 120 plots. And right in the middle of this unique area, we talk about maintenance, education, medical, community, business center, and store. So this giving you access to very convenient things that you need. And we can just put our energy and our money together and the resource together and build these things. And then also use profits from investment from some of these other operation and uh, make these things work for our community. So these are all things that, uh, you know, it's gonna take some more time for us to talk and work on it together, but uh, trying to lay out a vision. All right, so that is a phase two land layout. And the third, uh, phase vision uh, and it's uh, something that has to just be worked on. It's not something that we just have already in the bag and just have set up and organized, but you do have to plan ahead and think ahead in order to just get these things uh, set up. So if you're trying to do something five years from now, the best thing to do is to start it now. Uh, so once we get um, one or two of the new surveys, uh, we're gonna just work on seeing how much of this beach access land is the chiefs uh, and then we, we can kind of negotiate and go from there but it's important that we find out the you know, you know find out the dimensions of what's available uh, so that is um one of those plans that's um that you're working in progress while you're trying to take care of other things and so one thing about this uh, email is this um it's a lot of information, but at the same time, too, it's just trying to give you all of the details that you need for clarity. Um, what we'll put together, it's been a lot of information, but more important, if you're interested in uh, acquiring land and looking to move, live, and do business in Africa, the goal is to literally just be clear on these things. Uh, so, and it's one of the things that I always let people know, David, just want to talk directly about any of these things, even if they're looking to connect on, on another project. 
uh, we can always do consultation and I can just definitely always talk with you in general and then we can work out a game plan and if you agree to move forward and things like that. But uh, beyond that, just trying to get us to be clear about what we're getting ourselves involved in. And then when we do get involved with it, after we have checked it out and say, you know, this is it, make a commitment and stay together and work on it. That's why we don't, we don't get a whole lot of things done because we uh, get excited about projects, we commit, and then we change our mind because of one or two things that has changed our mind because of something else. Like I've had people uh, leave this project and go to other countries, other countries, including Gambia, Tanzania, and then there's other countries that's not comparable to what we're building there, but that's their choice. But at the same time, to, uh, you want to limit your loss by you know, sticking together with these decisions. These are investment uh, decisions. That's why you have sign-offs on here, including a sign-off for the overview, which is this, a full overview of the community about what the whole community is about and what, uh, you know, basically all they need to know. Uh, and then also sign off for bylaws and, and things that are cancellation and refund policy. And that's because uh, we don't want no trouble with nobody. And we want people to be clear about what they're getting into. And this is not something that you just make a decision right away. You do need to process it. And if you ever want to come, to see the land, it's available. That's why we spend money to make sure that you have people available to show you the land, make sure that the, there's an office there, make sure we have the chief people uh, there in the town and make sure that uh, you can just check it out. And then you can also come here in Georgia. We can also meet in town or you can meet here at this office and we can sit down and go over all of the documentation, everything. It's all on our website, africafortafricans.org. And then everything else is also sent via email with this one email called join black South pan african community so i'm always recommending that those who are listening to what we're talking about compare it to what the next person out there have and trust me you would never see as much documentation as what we give you access to and then we already have over 100 and something videos just dealing with the community itself from showing the land to conference call to us just having discussions interviews and things like that uh, so it's a serious project that uh, put a whole lot of work into. And uh, I always tell, always tell everyone that judge people by the works and follow the works, follow the direction of where the work is going and things like that, because it's a lot of people can say a lot of things. And unfortunately, uh, you have people who, you know, it's easier for them to talk about what you're doing. And it's like, come join the party. Let me see if you can figure this thing out easier than we can figure it out, because, yeah. Uh, most people will get involved in these things. It just it's it wears them out. So that's what we're here to do to here to represent you and handle all the stuff. Uh, even just having our people right there by the lands commission in Cape Coast that can just go up there and handle any kind of business. And you know it's it takes a work and takes a while to put this together. And then, you know myself and uh, my small crew we put the work in and made it a reality to where. We can get you your legal land set up and soon you're going to have your final registration per paperwork, uh, your le legal deed and things like that. Uh, so, you know, while we're doing this, we're learning, we're figuring things out. We're seeing where you can be more efficient I and mean, you're, you're talking to attorneys and other people you're dealing with and say, hey, why don't we just do this and make this simpler, make it more organized, uh, make it less stress on the people that are coming. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're trying to make this in the simplest form. So all you have to do is just reach out to us. Next thing you know, you're traveling to Africa, you're you're there uh, in Ghana, you're there on your land, you're building your home, you're enjoying your, your peace of mind. And, you know, it's just something that's smooth like that. But in order to get there, you know, you have to willing to put some serious work in and willing to just go through the pain of just dealing with people who, you know, may not necessarily just be down with what you, you're doing. Uh, and, or people who are down with it and change their mind because what they're going to realize is this is serious work. This is hard work. And this is, you have to just really have this thing planned out in your mind, you know? And uh, you now, so that's why you don't see me this dear living in Africa because I have to do the complex part of it, which is to be here in this office and work with all the people that we have here to get them there and get things in place. So as we keep on moving forward the next few years, the goal is to just get all of this done. So family, this is all kind of information, JPEGs, uh, PDF files. And so let me move from there and go right to our, so this is the uh, YouTube page in general. And once you're on my YouTube page, 
you to scroll down to where it say Black Star Pan African Community. And there you'll see that's 116 videos. I have about eight videos of the land that are, that are recorded and I'm gonna be publishing in the next day or two. And that is gonna make it about 124 videos. And if you scroll down, you see the titles. We just, you know, we're giving you updates on everything, you know? So I tell people, no matter what, whoever say whatever, I'm always gonna speak and share what we're doing because only we're the only ones know what we're doing. And I'm always telling people like, you know, what people say and makeup is incredible. You know, it's a little different when you're out here actually doing the work versus you being a commentator or you being a, you know, and things like that, uh, well, beyond just a commentator, uh, being just there in the sidelines uh, in, in, in the audience, uh, you know, stepping out here and just, going back and forth and work with all of these different people from America to Africa and dealing with the legal system there in the country of Ghana and trying to understand it so you can get things done and deal with people that are professional business people and just being able to survive all that and still being here doing this business. I'm telling people that uh, we have something incredible going on and we're just looking for more people to join the energy so we could just make it work more efficient. So that's what that incredible 60 acres is there for a family. But those who are looking to do something special there, right in that town, uh, especially two to three years from now, or even this anywhere from one year from now, uh, when we have more of the land set to where it's clear, more things put in place. And it's no different from how we started with the first 15 acres of land. It's just all raw. The next thing you know, it's being cleared, it's being set up, houses are going up. And things like that. It's just so you know, one, two, three uh, process. And as I scroll down, it's just documentation after documentation, and um, from short videos to long conference call, and uh, the conversations are what you hear us have. You know, after a while, you start seeing more and more things get done from those conference calls and those conversation, because all we're talking about is just progressing and figuring things out and that's becoming more of an expert. And that's just right there, family, the 2021 video. So we have videos for 2020 and also for 2019. Then we have some very clean videos of just the, the, the raw land itself and also just the beach when the, you know, when it was just really clean and everyone was doing their routine and cleaning it up. Uh, and our first time meeting the chief, our attorney, our first resident. Uh, so it's just a whole documentation of information that's ready to share with anyone who just sorry, who was interested. So I'm always saying again, uh, compared information with what other people have and things like that. And um, and then you'll see all of also all of the people that we know we're always networking and connecting with. And one thing about this, when you see uh, videos with us, we're in different countries, different places. It's a whole lot of people that we're dealing with. Uh, so that's really just showing a Pan-African effort and energy. And the more of us connect together, the better it is. Uh, this is the uh, Facebook group. Let me see if this thing could there we go. And there's some basic information posted on here, which is just all of the uh, pictures, videos, uh, any upcoming conference call. And this is one of our last our conference call, more on the private side with our private group, uh, which that's the only difference is this is not publicly available for anyone to chime in live. And it's just our private group. But we talked about uh, vested land clarification because there's a lot of ignorant people out there that's running their mouth saying foolishness and things like that. So I'm always here to educate people because I'm in that world of just connecting and doing business in Africa and learning how things work. So that video uh, is right to explain about land, um, you know, being clear on land searches and things like that and having things set up for registration. Uh, so while we're doing this whole progress, uh, whole process of um, living and doing business in Africa, our goal is to educate our brothers and sisters and share updated information. And then for those who have accurate information and, you know, and are educated and want to share educational information, then they can reach out to us and connect with us but uh, I'm not the person that's looking to deal with 
uh, a level of ignorance and things like that. I have a big bookshelf back there, a stack of books. Uh, it's very important to uh, people educate themselves when we get involved with things. But nevertheless, uh, anyone out there that's uh, not clear about what we're doing, I'm always available. And then for those who just want to make up whatever they want to make up and believe what they want to believe, they have to just keep doing what they're doing. But I'm always telling everyone, if you want to know anything that's going on with anything, you reach out to the source. And if you're doing tours and investment with me, I'm the source, so connect with me. And I give you clarity of everything because we always have groups going to Africa. That's what I'm always telling people, groups going to Africa and people getting ready to work on their building or showing interest. Uh, so goes just to keep on working on it. And so these are the, some of our basic posts. And so just information central. So the next thing is a uh, website. Um, once you get to africaforafricans.org, the first link on the main menu is Black Star Pan African Community. So that link right there gives you a full access of details. And I'm gonna go to all of them and I'm gonna click on one link because one of those things where you're limited on going to all this information. All right, so uh, we have a nice uh, introduction, then uh, site map, land survey, and GPS location. And so that's the link I'm gonna be clicking on. Then uh, below that, lands commission search, prime objective, business opportunities, building and buying homes, membership rules and code of conduct, membership application, uh, but if you need the membership application, I can just send what we have via email. This is just for show, uh, but it's the same information. Uh, pictures and videos, which is uh, this links uh, that takes you to Facebook for all of the photos that we have taken on the land. And then uh, uh, YouTube for all of the videos that we have taken, like I just showed uh, based on our playlist. Uh, committees, uh, so we have 10 committees and uh, as we grow in numbers and we build, we look to just organize everyone in committees and we focus on the 10 different things dealing with the committees, uh, bylaws, and then uh, getting started, land cost requirements and uh, refund policy. So all of these are this uh, important information just to read through. All right, so once I click on the link, uh, so what we have, this is one of the homes. And that is our logo right there. And this is one of our older picture. We'll be adding a newer picture for last tour. And that is uh, one of our groups there. And these are some of the other groups right there on the land. So this is an introduction similar to uh, well, some more detail, but similar to what I have on the uh, find on the uh, email for join Black Star Pan African Community. So this is the uh, link that I needed to click on right here: site map, land survey, and GPS location. So that is our 50 acres, 15 acres site map with 50 plots. So it's a nice little sequence. And this is the uh, GPS link for the 15 acres. These are the first two are for the 15 acres. And after that, it shows you GPS link for the 60 acres and also for the uh, Black Star Community Office. For those members who wanna go see their plots or those who are interested want uh, someone to take them to see the 15 or and the 60 acres. So, so I have the links and I have the coordinates also. So you can put that in your navigation and you can just get an idea geographically where it's at. 15 acres site survey. So this is where you take this to the Lands Commission and ask, is this really Black Star Pan-African community? And is this really legal and organized and things like that? 
So I'm always telling people, uh, we have enough information for you to do your legal diligence. Uh, so that's the 15 acres and the 16 acres, 60 acres. So that is it right there. So that's, and everything you're gonna see is with our name, Black Star Pan-African Community. And we're looking at this earlier. This is a rough draft. And once I get a better draft, I'll just replace this, but want to at least show something so it can let's look realistic. And this is a famous uh, newsletter. Uh, the goal is always to update as much information on here as possible, but this is the ideal information to share it as our conference called Details. Uh, Business Incorporation, uh, links uh, for all of the things we just talked about, Facebook, YouTube, the website. A general conference called Topics that uh, we've gone through, um, some of it. And when we do these calls, uh, it's impossible to go through all of this. So the goal is uh, if you have questions about something specific is to ask a question. Uh, beyond that, I'll just do my best to just go over as much as I can. So there you go, you have 15 and uh, 60 acres. Lands Commission search, and then this is Nana Haiti letter, which is also in the Join Black Star Pan African community. And this is the chief credentials and confirmation of the land deal. And also in the email, we have the 99 year lease. We also have a memorandum of understanding. We have just all kind of legal information just to show the deal between Black Star Pan African community and this uh, specific chief. It's palaces right there in the town. We passed by the offices right there. And we've been there numerous amount of times, just came from the attorney's office. So these are all people that uh, we know where they're at. We're connected to them, we're working together and just trying to show the true energy of just black people in general working together to create something uh, for the future, create something for our children, create something to where we can just enjoy our investment and enjoy um, all of the hard years and all of our hard work and just enjoy paradise because ultimately that's what it's all about also is to put ourselves in a place to where we can enjoy paradise. And that's why I always bring up Jamaica, um, you know, and, you know, because, you know, just because you're born somewhere in paradise don't mean that you can enjoy paradise. You know? Uh, so a lot of times, if you want paradise, what I'm learning is we have to build it. And in order for, for you to build it, you're going to need the basic elements of things, which is land and land in the area where you can do what you need to do without having a whole bunch of stipulations and things like that. And that's why we just literally just made a deal to pay for the land without any stipulations and things like that. And that is our best location that we can find on the entire planet to do this project. And so there is no limit. There, were, there is no limitation. The goal is to find the best place. And now, you know, there's no way for you to go to every place in the world, you know, but it's like, you know about many places and based on what you number it down to, this has been my best experience in Africa out of the 10 countries. And, and it's the best place where I can see us doing what we're doing. And the next best country, which is the untapped, uncharted uh, Liberia, it's uh, perfect, but uh, you know, it's the same thing I'm gonna tell everybody that I've been talking about. We have to be willing to put the work in to get it done. And the work means basically those of us who wanna see the project happen here and those of us who want to see the project happen there in a specific country have to work together and, and make it work. There's no magical trick beyond that. And that was my last meeting there in Ghana and it was beautiful uh, from having um, uh, my two consultants talk and then uh, the new consultant uh, taking charge and working on one aspect of things and talking to both chiefs that uh, our land is in their area and working on anything to where we can come together and get our land registered and get things done. So it's like, we've been able to perfect the situation and how we go from point, you know, point A of just taking a look at land and then going through the full process up to where we're working on the final thing, which is registration. And um, it's uh, something a lot more difficult than it seemed. And we've been able to pull it off. And I'm thankful for our ancestors and all of our brothers and sisters that uh, work together to work on this project and the people stay committed to it. 
uh, because that's how we pull these things off. We put the work in it. And then whenever we have issues or problems in the situation, we handle it, that's it. Uh, so we are moving forward strong. And so family, that is most of uh, what I wanted to uh, share with everyone. Uh, so I'm gonna open things up. So if anyone have any questions, um, all you have to do is, is um, give your name, where you're calling from your question, and then I can answer your questions and we can just go through it. So right now all you have to do is unmute yourself. Greetings, our brother Prince. Thank you for joining, you're on the call. Let me know if you want to say anything, Prince, or if you're still up. This is our prime time call. Oh, it's time. It's time. Greetings, brother. How are you feeling? Hey, my brother. How are you? Good. Yes, man. I hope, I hope I've been saying enough encouraging things about your, your, your now country, Ghana, as you make Ghana your home and ready to build on, in the future on your, on your paradise at Black Star. Yes, ma'am, but uh, share some good news with us. Share us uh, something nice as it is the 3rd of July, soon to be the 4th of July, as these folks celebrate their independence and we need to, to get prepared for our own. Well, ain't not really much new here, really. All I could say is that the weather has cooled down a lot and we're in the thick of the rainy season. We're getting a lot of floods. Getting a lot of floods, so you're staying Especially in Accra Central. But where I am, I'm not ex I'm not exposed to any floods or anything like that. I mean, the drains are open, but they're free. They're, they're not blocked, but the drains run all the way down to Aqua Central, kind of like around in the Circle neighborhood. That's where the drains flow over into. So we're getting a lot of heavy, intense rain. Um, you know, the, the weather has cooled down a lot. Like today was just about 79 degrees. It's just really cool. I just came off the street. Um, and it was just nice out. You know, it's just nice and cool. But Ghanaian said it's cold. <laughs> it's cold, though. It's cold, though. <laughs> but it's not cold for me. It's just fine. You know? It's just fine. I mean, I heard that they uh, reduced the fuel duty here. But the trucker drivers, they haven't figured out how to reduce the fares. I don't think anything that goes up in Ghana ever goes down. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, man, it's kind of funny here, my brother, because check this out. Um, trust the drivers, they just charge whatever the hell they want to do. Nothing is regulated here. A mate will charge, one mate will charge you, like, say, from East Ligon to where I live. One mate may charge you one way, 10 CDs. The other one will probably charge you 15 Seriously, it's just no regulation. It's just, just crazy here, man. It's just no regulation of anything. That people just do whatever the hell they feel like doing. You know? It's crazy. So, Charles, you rather be here or there? Oh, no, I'd rather be here all the time. I, okay. I don't want to come back to live in Babylon no time soon. I love it here. I mean, there's challenges, Dr. Austin. Don't get me wrong. I mean, a lot of the time I'm I'm like, you know, just being a little bit sarcastic. You should have known my personality oh, I know. by now. I know. I know. <laughs> but, but this is freedom right here. I mean, like, I Go Black to Africa was doing some interviews. Uh, and believe it or not, Almost like he was down in Accra Mall and he was just interviewing uh, strangers and they all say, why are you here? He even had a guy, a mixed race guy that had fled Germany to come back to Ghana. I think one of his parents was white, the other one was Ghanaian. And he came back to live in Ghana uh, when he was like uh, 15, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents just figured he'd be better off in, uh, in Ghana rather than being in Germany. Wow. So, it's not just people wanting to flee from the States. People are fleeing from all over the world. It's just that some people probably going to leave it too late when it's just not able. It, it, it just won't be able. They just won't be able to leave Babylon anymore. It'll I just agree. be too long. 
they just be it'll just be over for them. I agree. Cause there's gonna, yeah. Because there's there's gonna be a point where you won't be able to leave where you are. If you're not trying to make, you know, inroads to leave now, it's mm -hmm. just gonna be too late. Mm -hmm. Where were you gonna get the flights? So you, look, right now, uh, a bunch of flights with America Airlines and Delta has been canceled. Pilots are on strike with Delta. It's just a shit show right now. It is, which is why I'm interested in building right away, you know? Yes, my sister. You remember I always used to tell you that you don't have a lot of time to figure things yeah. out? You, yes. And you, you gotta absolutely figure it out. Correct. You, you right. got to figure it out, Dr. Austin, on the fly. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. you're military now, so you guys are used to figuring out stuff on the fly, true. you know? That's true. So it, it's like that. I call what what else had taken place now that I wanted to tell you? Yeah, um, building supplies are going up in price. I mean, somebody was telling me like um, cement used to be like 30-something CDs a bag. Now it's up to 50-something. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, That's it is. That's why it's, it's important to, to hurry up and get the survey and start building. Yeah, yeah. Because I at least want to have my... Um, you know, I can stay in a tent temporarily, but I don't want to, <laughs> you know, especially during the rainy season. No, you know, that wouldn't be. I, that I want my really foundation. Good. No, it yeah. wouldn't be good at all. But I, I want I want the foundation, at least the foundation built, you know. Yeah. And then I want to build during the dry season. Yeah. If possible, you know. Yeah. Hurry up and have a place so that when things are not, working well for me here i have a place to go uh -huh. in ghana and sierra leone because i'm still yeah. you know I, I i sierra leone giving me citizenship so i have to go get that but oh, at okay. least i have my residency in ghana at least uh, i have that i'm so happy that you got it too doctor honest to god i am mm -hmm. you're about the business yes indeed you're about Very the business strategic. yes and you can see uh, the continent of Africa is like a pay-to-play society. There's mm -hmm. two things that gets African people's attention here. First thing is U.S. dollars, and the mm -hmm. second is religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. They have their undivided attention all day long. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about religion and money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. True. So true. you know, uh, I'm glad you came and. You got all of that out the way because probably by the next time you come back, the residency and the Ghana card, they would have increased in price. Yes. Yes. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Or they're just going to make it more complicated for you to get it. Yes. As a matter of fact, I talked to the lady that does it, you know, and so she told me if I ever need anything to contact her. <laughs> you know, so yeah, she's a really to have the that woman. That woman so darn greedy for money. I met her face to face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I met her at Acromont back in March, I think. Yeah, she a piece of work. You got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're leaving Babylon, you sometimes you have to pay the price, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a standoff with that lady there. Bramani had to come in and intervene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I had a standoff with her, for real. Mm -hmm. But that seemed to be that, that society. Yeah. You know? And I was told that a lot of the government officials hadn't been paid in months, you know, mm. so they try to get their money any type of way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you know uh, Dr. Austin here, when you're doing business with them, they always want to get the better of you. They always want a one-sided deal that favors them, but doesn't favor you. So you have to really be firm with them because they really don't understand really how to do. A lot of people don't really, who haven't left Ghana, don't really understand how business really works a lot of the time, unless they've been out of the country and been back. They just mm -hmm. want a lot of one-sided things to, to suit them only. They mm -hmm. don't understand a good deal. Mm -hmm. so, me, I'm not going to do no deal with nobody, and I care how bad I want something if the deal does not favor me. It needs to be a win-win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, why, why am I doing it for? I don't need to hand you any money if it doesn't favor me. Mm -hmm. but Some people yeah. believe in charity. Oh, hell no. You can't do that, man. We suffer too much. We, we have. But we I know that when you go there, you have to conduct yourself as a business professional, too. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know, you got to say what you mean and mean what you say and really yeah. be on your game, you know, yeah. you because you, I've seen it both ways yeah. where a lot of Americans go over there and they take advantage too. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that because it makes all of us look bad. Yeah. You know. But you know what, doctor, you're one of the smart ones that bought land because some of the people who came on the tour, I tried to tell them to, to get a plot, even if they didn't even intend on buying because they could sell it even if they didn't build on it. But some of them just wasn't really that receptive. And I believe they probably would try to buy and end up losing their money. Yeah. Because they'll end up buying something from someone where it's not been vetted. Mm. There's no lawyers involved. And the person would just come with a hard sale pitch and say, ah, I have Lando, it's mine, you know? And yeah. you you hand over your money and you 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 lose it. Exactly. That's so I tell people trust the system, man. Trust yeah. the system you about what we money. have. Um, you, you know, you lose your money. Uh, and you will lose your money. No, no, you the people that you're doing business with. And yeah. one thing I tell, I can say to people is like, you know, they know us and they know where we are and what we are yeah. about. Uh, yeah. But I would never understand it. But people have done that on many occasions, um, even in recent years. And, uh, you know, they, they not, you know, I understand not everybody wants to be in this whole community operation and things like that. Uh, but if you're going to just do something else, then, you know, you still have to bring your strength and numbers and still have to work the same organized process. Uh, yeah. And when, so when people see about the administrative costs, you know, that's, that's a serious cost. Like we have to pay attorneys and things like that. Try to avoid paying attorneys or consultants or people who know the ground and know the land. You mm. lose every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Unfortunately, so we're also trying to just let people know, hey, um, these are the things you can do, and these are mistakes that have been made by other people, and these are things that we found out that we can, you know, that you can do and make this thing work. The uh, thing is, Dr. Austin, here in this country, once you've done a, a deal yeah. and there's a problem with it, mm -hmm. and they've gotten your money, ain't no way on hell you're going to get back that money. You can't go to the attorneys? Oh, hell no. They charge you a ton of money. They charge you a ton of money. They'll hold you up in court for years. Yeah, that's how yeah, they it's do a, it. It's a strategy that you have to just be careful with dealing with. Yeah. Uh, so so what I've learned to do is you just sit down with everybody at the, at the table and then you just work it out with them. And you just, you know what I mean? And yeah. you, you kind of talk in, in the mindset of them that, you know, we're all building something together for our children, basically. And you know, people can work with that. The, you know, the same thing with the chief that we're dealing with. Uh, he, has, he has never missed a meet. He has, you know, he's always available at the meetings that we have, whether the lawyer needs to be there or other people need to be there. And we sit there and we talk and we just figure things out. I mean, now this, this whole process of us uh, or just people doing business internationally, this is, is still I'm not seen as this new, like modern day new, but uh, the way it's being done is this new and we have to just kind of figure out a bunch of things. But uh, it's a lot of things that go on in Ghana that I tell people it's best to pay for a consultant, pay for somebody, pay somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, or somebody that knows what's going on in the country. Because it's it's hard for people who never been, you know, never, never connected to this world to understand the kind of stuff that goes on. <laughs> like like brother Charles, I'm literally always um, I'm literally, um, literally always happy to see brothers there. Uh, Prince, just really happy to see you there living there because you can vouch for me and tell people how the country really is and how yeah. difficult it is to really survive and live there, especially yeah. if you have your, your family or you have a child or you have a current oh, yeah. business or a job that you're currently doing in another country and you're trying to live in two places. Oh, yeah, it is. Because even I was even looking into some schools, even though I don't have kids, right? But Not there's yet. some schools here. Not yet. <laughs> There's some schools that will charge you $30,000 a semester here in Ghana, private schools. Those are the international schools, right? Yeah. Yes. They'll okay. charge you $30,000 a semester. That oh, is some yes. mad money. I'm mm -hmm. not joking. I've seen it online. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you got people here who got cash because they, they had a prom like last month, and I saw kids. Uh, being chauffeured to the prom in Bentleys and Porsches. Oh, they yeah. got money here. They do. They they have yes. Yeah, they Instead got of 10%, maybe 1%, but the money is there. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's money here, man. There's money here. There's even a Ghanaian guy that's, who's a multi-millionaire. He owns Cristiano uh, Ronaldo's Lamborghini, and he's got it parked up there in a showroom in a, uh, Osu. You might know the place, Bamani, in Osu. Do you know the place? Uh, no, I'm probably not on top of my head. I'm going to send you the. I'm going to send you the video because it's your girlfriend that does the video. Uh, that 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 mixed race girl from Scotland. <laughs> my girlfriend is your woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 your girlfriend. I don't do the, the iterations now. I'm a, <laughs> you're a funny guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> this one here, man. It's that 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 girl with the funny accent and the funny body. You know who I'm talking. Yes, you know, yeah, I, I keep on reminding you that the call is being recorded. <laughs> oh, this one, uh, this one here, you may have to edit it out then, huh? No, I'm not. She, they're going, she's going to send her people after you. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. And the beauty about it is that um, that whole entire continent eventually is going to become crypto friendly. A lot of people don't realize that, but that's another thing that's going to um, take shape. On um, that on the company. Right now, people are not even using credit card machines. So I'm trying to see how they get the cryptocurrency from this cash system. Uh, so um, I'm sure know, that's the direction of the world, but- uh, you, you know, you know how, get they, sooner later. How, how people pay for stuff here, they use a thing called a mobile wallet, a momo. Perfect, yes. Yeah, so your cell phone. That's how people pay. Okay. So uh, Dr. Austin, did you get a, a, a Ghana card? I'm going to get one when I go back. I'm thinking about going back in December. Yeah, you should. Get the Ghana card and open up a bank account. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know what? I have an interesting story to share with you. I think one of the guys from the regulator of the banking stated that whether you have a Ghana card or not, you sh you're allowed now mm -hmm. to do transactions without it. Oh, because good. Because it's causing a shit storm where people of open bank accounts, similar like what happened to you, Bamani. Now, this regulator guy has come out to say, look, even if you don't got your bank, uh, you don't have your Ghana card, we will allow you to draw withdraw money. But there's one caveat to it. He said that we may ask you some enhanced questions if you don't have your Ghana card with you, but they will be allowing people to withdraw or deposit money without the Ghana card because it's just causing a lot of issues. So I, think, I think that, that's smart. That is smart. Because I'm thinking yeah. about opening up um with the ECOWAS. Um or Eco -Bank? Bank. Eco -Bank? Uh, because, yes, I think yes. Because they have that in Sierra Leone too. You know, you I know, don't want to have one you know, bank in one country and then another. You one, know, one one bank you should consider too as well is Standard Chartered Bank. It's an international bank. They should have that one in Sierra Leone, Standard Chartered. Hmm, okay. Okay. It should be in Sierra Leone too. But yeah, you can go with uh, Echo Bank. Um, you know, there's so many banks here Fidelity Bank, ZF Bank. There's so many banks here. It's just not even funny anymore. What about so the bank many. that you use, Access Bank? Yeah, I like them. Access, I mean, yes, true. Let, let me let me tell you what happened to me last month at Access Bank. I went there, and you know, since I had this account, I've never used it to withdraw money or uh, done anything. I totally forgot about the PIN number. I could have sworn I wrote it down, but I didn't. So I went to the ATM and I was trying to pull money out, and I didn't want the card to get taken by the ATM. So I just went in and said, I can't remember the the, the PIN. So they said they would reset it. They said it, it could be reset within a few hours. But then when the manager came out, she said, no, it's going to be tomorrow. So she says, you can get money, but you're going to have to pay for a counter check, which is 25 to I said, no, I ain't about to pay for a counter check. I said, I can't come into a bank to pay to get money out. So what I did, I opened the savings account immediately, transferred the cash from the current account over to the savings, and they let me have my cash. Then they uh, reset my PIN in 24 hours' time. But the service was good because even the manager, she came out. She nice. came out and met me. You know, you would never get that kind of service That's back nice. home in the state. 
They probably try to call security on me. Oh, get me this guy here. He's been here too long, making up too many complaints. Call cops. But there, the manageress came out, asked me what's the problem. I told her, and she expedited everything. So sometimes the, 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 the customer services can be good, depending on what kind of institution it is. True. That is very but, true. Yeah, but the Axis Bank is a global bank. I think it's a Nigerian bank. No, it's it's um England. Uh, oh, the Access Bank. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they are Nigerian bank. Okay. Uh, uh, bank. Okay. Oh, that's a good. Lot, a lot of the banks here are own a, a Nigerian bank. Okay. A lot of the banks South Africa. Um, kind of, uh, I'm under shaking right now because um. The blockchain is about to take set into effect pretty much, and they're about to defy these banks. Eventually, everybody's going to eventually end up carrying a wallet, your own personal wallet, where you can keep your own funds on the wallet. That's what we got here in Ghana. Right. We already have that right. here already. It's happening right now. And that's why the banks here in the US are panicking. The government mm -hmm. are panicking because they don't know what's happening, they cannot control people anymore. People will be able to send money to their families, and they won't be able to stop people from, um, from, um, whatever with their funds. Mm -hmm. Well, better than that, all these countries that put sanctions on Russia is all backfired on them because Russia, China, India, exactly. Brazil, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's Russia, China. Mm -hmm. India and Brazil, they set up a thing called BRICS. And right. they're trying to outdo uh, uh, the United States. As like they said, they're going to open a, yes. a world bank that they can loan money to third world countries. And there's backed by, and there's back by gold. Yeah, exactly. Well, the U.S. not backed by anything. It says yeah. pen, but it's really not. It's notes. Exactly. It's over for America. So yeah. Brothers and sisters who are in Babylon, y'all need to head the hell on out of there before it caves in because white folks are going to try to kill as many black people as they can. Mm -hmm. Because if you know now, mass shootings are on a daily basis now. It's, it's off the chain. The amount of mass shooting, I mean, every day, they just kill another brother. They shot, they shot this dude like 60 times. Mm -hmm. So they're literally executing us now for fun, for kicks. But you know so what? Well, not sometimes, really safe to be there. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes that for us to leave. You don't think some of the people will want to leave, though? They, they and then they just, you know, continue with this nightmare, right? Yeah, some people just won't leave. They're just not going to get on the knee. The feet mm -hmm. of white mommy and daddy, they're just going to stay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for me, man, I said, like, I got to get on out of here, man, because even if no harm was done to me, just to see people just die senselessly for nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a country where we're not even wanted, even though we built it, we're not wanted, but they treat dogs better than they treat us. Mm -hmm. So that's just, for me, there's just no reason why I need to be there, mm -hmm. you know? So... People, people really need to, you know, really figure out what they need to do because white people are really acting out. <laughs> they be you know, in they kind of know it, the curtain <laughs> has been drawn on them. Yeah, they be in themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and we get to see it more. Mm. But yeah, you're right, you know, but some people, it, it, they just have to endure more. Yeah, all this praying in, right? marching in, sitting in, yes, voting in, ain't mm. gonna get us nowhere. No, it's not. It's, it's not so, gonna work because mm. one thing I do know, right? All these countries, like United States, uh, put sanctions. I mean, a lot of European countries have put sanctions on Russia, like the United Kingdom. They put sanctions. Germany has all these countries, but they forgot one thing. All these countries rely on Russia for natural mm -hmm. gas in the winter to keep warm and to cook. That's now, true. if they if they put sanctions on Russia, Russia says, well, screw you all. If you put sanctions on, we're not going to sell you no more natural. Where are you going to get it from? Mm -hmm. 
Where are you going to get natural gas from to keep your house warm in the winter? So all these sanctions were backfired. Do you know a lot of these European countries are buying uh, natural gas from Russia on the down low? Even they're as trying they, to buy it from Africa too. Yes, they are. They're buying it on the down low. They're buying it. Germany is it's just bought a load of, of natural gas from Russia. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's piped true. Russia going through Poland, going through Lithuania, all those countries. And you know what Russia said as well? If you want to buy fuel from us, you got to pay us in rubles now. Mm -hmm. You know the ruble is the highest currency on the on the globe right now. Uh -huh. The ruble it's, it's even it's even stronger than the UK sterling, which mm -hmm. that normally is the strongest currency. But the sterling is falling in value. Mm -hmm. The ruble is the strongest currency because they're telling people now, like you want to do business with us, we're not going by the US dollar. We're not going by the, the, the standard of the dollar anymore. We're going by the uh, uh, the the ruble because you know the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world, but not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. It's over. Mm -hmm. I think people have woken up that they know the US dollar is not back. Just like what you, it's not backed by anything. Mm -hmm. It's just not. So the Russians have really, really sort of like figured out what to do. So it's kind of over. Yeah, you're right, Patricia. Russia did help a lot of African countries to become free, which is why a lot of them did not turn their back on Russia. Yeah, look, Russia is on the right side of history because they're the only white people they that never enslave blacks. They are. They are on the right they're side. Only whites. They're a different breed of whites. I, I'm not saying that we should trust them, but we could we could trade with them, but we I just don't agree. need to live amongst them, though. I agree. Because all white people will, will, will switch on you at some point, but, like, they are... Uh, they don't have blood on their hands towards us. They may have blood on their hands towards the Ukraines and the Polish and those other Eastern, but they ain't got nothing to do with us. That's why I don't white crime. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, you know, I would trade with the Russians. I ain't got no problem with Russians. I know for a long time that Russians and Ukrainians never ever liked each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen them. I've dealt with both before and they, none of them had an issue with me, but they wanted to kill each other. Mm -hmm. I worked amongst them. They just didn't like each other. And mm -hmm. they said the reason why they didn't. Right. Yeah, the, the, the Ukraine said like the Russian was always had his neck, his, his, his uh, leg on his neck, on the Ukrainian guy's neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, I said to Ukrainian, I know exactly how that feels because your white folks, you've had your goddamn uh, knee and our neck for the for 400 years. Mm -hmm. Over. Yes. Yeah, over. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But yeah, it's good to know, you know, doctor, that you're coming back and try to bring as many people with you if they're I'm interested. Trying. I am trying. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you know, at the moment, besides Sierra Leone and Ghana, the only two countries on the continent actually give you citizenship because Gambia ain't giving out exactly. shit. Exactly. Gambia ain't going to give out nothing. No, Gambia they have to. And see, my thing is, you know, I'm going, I'm going to be loyal to the one who gave me citizenship first. Mm -hmm. And so that's Sierra Leone. I will have that the beginning of December. If you have the ECOWAS passport, it will benefit you a lot. And I will have that. And so now you, I can go to these multiple, you know, countries and open businesses and stuff, you know, make it a lot easier to travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be. You'll be able to visit all over Africa. That's right. And so my next one is Liberia because I'm crew, you know, according to my African ancestry. And so I've been there, but I'm going to connect with the crew people. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I, ha I have plans and I'm executing those plans. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So well, perfect. So family, um, uh, Prince, anything else you want to share in reference to and things in in reference to land, uh, especially since we're trying to educate people about land, 
Um, well, because well, especially this, for the, the people who are not going to join us and want to do something different. Yes, I, I have something I could I could share. I think if you want to buy a land here successfully, it doesn't matter who is selling it to you. It could even be your own mother. You have to go. The first thing you need from the person who the seller or the agent, you need a site plan. And with that site plan, you take the site plan to the lands commission to verify who really owns the land or to see if there's any litigation on the land. Once you've done those things, you won't be chopped of your money because you will know who owns the land before you hand over your cash. See, if, if, no, ser if no search comes up on the land, that's a problem too. Mm -hmm. But it's worse when it comes up that there's litigation on the land. That means that it, it, there's court proceedings ongoing or it, it, the search could come back in a different name. That means that the person did register the title to themselves. And believe it or not, most people, I'll say more than half the country, they don't register the land to themselves. And the, one, of, one of the reasons why they don't is because it's expensive. To register land is like it, it, it's like about seven hundred dollars or something like that. But Mali would be more accurate with the price, but it's around about that price range. And some people just aren't aware that they have to do it, these it things. It depends I'm, on the deal, but what we have is seven hundred, but it's, uh, which includes because uh, we have to add you know the other land, which is uh, the the business center and the community center. So, you know, we have to just add up all 60 plots and divide them by 50 and things like that. So that's our price we came up with. Some are more and some are less. It just depends on many different things in the Lands Commission. Yeah. So Some people here are not even aware that they have to even register their lands because the, the, the culture here, if, if someone gets a land to buy and it's cheap, they won't even bother to do any due diligence. They're just not aware of these things. I think it's also a lack of education. Some people just don't understand. And it's not only foreigners that lose money. A lot of Ghanaians lose money in buying land too. Because people think, ah, I won't spend money on a lawyer. But I hand over maybe 50,000 CDs for a plot of land. And you end up losing everything. That's just the culture here. You know? Whereas we normally, when we're buying a house stateside, we normally, a lawyer is normally involved automatically. There's a broker involved, a reality broker, and there's normally a bank involved. So you have three different, you know, systems to protect you. Because no bank is going to loan you money against the land that the seller is not registered to him. So, you know, you see, sometimes when you take a mortgage in this country, sometimes it could be a safeguard in a way, too, because the bank, before they loan you the money, they'll do checks and balances. See, but the interest rates will kill you here. <laughs> interest rates are out of, the, out of this world. But yeah, that's that's basically it. If you're gonna buy land and you're not joining us, uh, you have to do your own basic due diligence. Or if you don't know how to do that, just go get yourself a lawyer. Uh, yes, absolutely. Someone who's yeah. good in the, in the real estate. Uh, so that's the main kind of lawyers you want to deal with. The, re the real yeah. estate experts uh, who just yeah. uh, got all the connections to get it done for you. But uh, you know these things don't have to happen, and you know, and, but uh, it's one of the things where. You know, you, you try, you're trying to just encourage people, could, but, uh, you know, I've seen bad things happen, but we all have to take responsibility for our negligence and us not, you know, being about our business and handling things a certain way. Uh, so, but th those are the things I've always recommend. Uh, get your consultant who knows the ground, somebody you trust with a whole, you know, you trust to the highest level and then get your real estate attorney and, um, and then have them do your fight and your work for you. And then get you a surveyor that can handle his business, because that's the problem that uh, we ran into. Uh, so, and then if you have big projects, you have to get multiple surveyors. So and that's another thing that can help you to save or, or help to pre prevent you from losing your money is to hire a surveyor 
and he can take care of the vetting on the land for you. He can take, he can organize the site plan and all these things and go to lands commission. It doesn't always have to be a lawyer. A surveyor can do these things too if you're not comfortable to do it yourself, you know? That's another way to protect yourself, to spend some money in order to prevent from losing all of your money. There you go, family. Those are, those are uh, expert advice, literally, and that will save your life. And that's for any, that goes for anyone, whether you're Ghanaian or whether you're an American or whether you're from just anywhere trying to do business in Africa or just yeah. anywhere. Yeah, one must get, it's good for one to get a surveyor because see, a lot of the lands here, besides the litigation issues, a lot of lands here are waterlogged. And a surveyor can guide you as to what you need to do to prep the land before you even start digging. Because a lot of the lands are waterlogged. They really are. You sometimes have to do a bit of preparation and, and, and sort of like, you know, make sure you have a good, firm, sturdy foundation. And waterproofing is very important. So it's good to have a surveyor. It's best to know everything up front than, you know, after the effect and it costs you more. See? That's it. Well, absolutely, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, if anyone else have any questions, uh, unmute yourself and ask a question before we close. And beyond that, family, that is all the details we have and all the information for you to view and check out our 15 and 60 acres land operation. Uh, so just reach out to me, family, if anyone is interested and uh, I can go through it with you. That's t-shirt you got on, man. It's a fly t-shirt, man. Absolutely, you know. Is it a Ghanaian t-shirt? Uh, yes, Ghanaian soccer jersey. They match all of my stuff in the house. You know something, man? That would be really nice, these colors, if you did your own shirts, your BS pack <laughs> shirts. And that. I'll get there. Color theme. Huh? No, I said I'll get there, you know? Well, yeah, the that's a real fly T-shirt, though, with the star in the middle and everything. <laughs> yes, fam, it is the black star. Yeah. So yes, family, that is our information on our Black Star Pan-African community. Are you, are you about to show us something? Yes, I'm trying to show something and stop something. Right. Yes, family, so that, that's what it takes, family, a crew of people to make it work. All right, so uh, family, uh, let me close for the night. And uh, We'll reconnect on the next call, uh, but if anybody just literally just want to talk about the land or anything, just call me and we can connect. All right. Okay, take thank care. you. Thank you so much. All right. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. All right, good night, good night.